Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Today I'm going to show you how we're going to build a simple geodesic dome out of paper. Why paper? Well, if you're just messing around and just kind of trying things out, it's a lot easier and cheaper working with paper than it is with steel or PVC pipe. You're pretty much always constrained by your maximum strut length, whether you're working with uh, PVC, metal pipe, conduit, anything like that, and with paper that's rolled up into a tube, uh, toilet paper tubes if you want to do that, straws, anything, you're always constrained by your maximum strut length. So what you do is, given your two strut factors, figure out what your maximum strut is, and then multiply and divide as necessary to figure out what your other one needs to be. For our case, a two-frequency dome is going to require this many A's and this many B's. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to use brads that we're going to stick through holes that we're going to poke in our paper. That way we don't have to come up with any sort of custom uh, connections because there's, we have four-way connections, we have five-way and six-way connections. And for no more than we're doing messing around with paper, we're not going to create any sort of custom, uh, custom joints. Okay, well that's kind of uh, all there is behind the theory of this. I'm not going to go deep like I said. Let's go ahead and get started building it. So start out by placing your dowel rod on diagonal corners and then rolling it back to one of the corners. This makes sure that your piece of paper, once you roll it, will be as long as it can possibly be. And what you want to do is roll the paper around the dowel rod so that you get consistent results. Make sure to keep it tight as you roll and then you can simply finish it off with just one piece of tape. Then simply slide it off the end of the dowel. I'll go ahead and measure my strut length with my ruler and then make a mark with my pen where each hole needs to go. Now make sure that you leave enough material at each end so that your hole doesn't tear out after you cut it. Now I'll go ahead and trim off the ends. Then you can go ahead and poke your holes either, uh, in this case I'm using a knife. I once upon a time have actually drilled them in my drill press because I had over a hundred holes to make and I had a little jig set up in my drill press, used a small bit on high speed and it worked really great. It was super, super fast. Another way you can make your tubes, if you want higher strength but shorter tube length, is to roll everything parallel. It's a little bit harder to do and requires more tape but it does give you uh, an even number of layers all the way down the tube. I was concerned with maximum strut length so I rolled my tubes diagonally but this certainly works and it's a lot stronger. But it takes a lot more tape. In this case I'm going to end up using five pieces of tape it looks like. But then you simply slide it off the tube as you did before you can see that the length difference between the two is fairly significant. But because the, the diagonal tube, which is longer, uh, has fewer layers of paper near the tips, it is not quite as strong. It is a little bit simpler to build because it takes uh, less tape and it's a lot easier to roll because you just have to keep the one corner tight instead of the whole tube tight while you roll it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and make my marks first, then poke the holes and flatten them. And there you have it. That's not too difficult. Let's do about 60 more and put it together. All right, so now I'm ready to assemble this thing. I've got a whole bunch of A's and a whole bunch of B's. If you are building something higher than two frequency, I would definitely recommend color coding these. It's easy for me to tell which ones are A's and B's by length. You can see it's fairly significant. However, if you start to build three frequency and higher, um, the differences between the lengths aren't quite as great and it's kind of hard to tell. Actually after this is done I'm probably going to color code these anyway so that I can just tell at a quick glance rather than have to stack them up and everything. Okay so I've got everything, 10 of my pieces here, 
arranged in a circle and it's nowhere near perfect and that's okay because as you start to build this dome, it's going to pull itself into shape. So when I got these laid out, and then I'm just gonna go and stick my brads through the holes at each connection. Now what I'm gonna do is build from the bottom up. When I built my third frequency dome, which is maybe 50% larger than this one, I started from the top down. That can be a problem when you start to get to build larger things because as you start to try to add pieces underneath, you have to then tilt the top of your dome around like this, and it gets really, really uh, difficult to do. So I would definitely recommend building from the bottom up, because uh, I screwed up the other time and it was no fun, for sure. So definitely build bottom up. All of the holes for this project were ultimately made with the drill press after I made my first few with the knife. I just set up a simple jig, and that allowed me to uh, drill these much, much quicker. I'm going to go ahead now and speed up the video on this uh, because it's going to take a little bit to assemble, but I'll include captions and little comments along the way. Now I'm going to go through and add an A and a B at each joint with the idea that all of my B's then are going to come together and all of my A's will come together in an alternating pattern around. The first ring around the bottom was all uh, the longer pieces, the A's. Now this inner ring is going to be all B's. So I'm going to go now connect these. And as I do this, it's going to start to uh, pull itself into shape. If you're building something much larger, you'd certainly want friends to help at this point. Or cut yourself a few extra tubes and notch an end so that you could um, stick one end of the tube into the ground and stick the notched end onto your tubes or joints to help hold this in place while it comes together. Now you can see we have something that's starting to look a little bit domish. At each of these points, we've got pentagons and hexagons, so a bunch of five-way and a bunch of four-way connectors. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and we're gonna alternate uh, this next layer of pieces that comes out of the top. And now we have another round of A's. You can see how it's constantly pulling itself into shape as it goes. Well, that looks pretty cool. A geodesic dome made out of rolled up paper. Now, of course, you can scale this uh, to any size you want. Like the example I mentioned, if you had newspaper uh, for each of these struts, you could make a dome that's much, much bigger, which would be really nice for actual shelter. Now, there's a lot else that you could do with this. Um, for this model, uh, it's not much use. Maybe I'll uh, let my son's stuffed animals play on it. Uh, that's about all it would be good for. You can see it's really, really rigid. Now, if you wanted to make a door, luckily this is strong enough that you can remove any one joint here around this lower perimeter, and uh, it'll be fine. Of course, the smaller the hole you have, the better. If you could get by building a dome large enough so that your door was just one of these sections here, great. But odds are you'll need to remove a few struts. You can remove up to one whole node, and it'll still hold its shape. Preferably, if you can, though, remove a pentagon instead of a hexagon because it, it's smaller, so you have a smaller hole. Now, one cool thing that I noticed that you might also be able to use this for if you were to uh, maybe not even scale it up much, but definitely you'd want it out of a different material. If you invert this top piece, I've tried uh, removing it, which, and you wouldn't want to do that, but let me get this fastened back down. If you now have the top piece inverted, you can invert the entire structure. And let's say you wanted to put a glass or a wooden top on it, and you've got a pretty cool looking table. If you wanted to not invert this, of course, you could always just leave it like it was. But you could hang it. It could be an odd chandelier if you wanted to put some lights in it. You could build it like this, put some legs on it, and have an evil layer chair to sit in. Geodesic domes are just absolutely great. It's really fascinating to me. Anyway, I mean, that's about all there is to it. Let me see if I can. Uh. Now, of course, if you want to build a higher frequency, I won't, I'm not going to show you my third frequency dome. It's on my website. There's a picture of it, of me sitting inside it. It's, like I said, it's 50% or so bigger. Uh, that'd be the minimum size I'd want for a shelter. 
but as you go up in frequency, you go up in complexity and the number of struts that you have to have, and it's just a mess. However, it's a lot more spherical looking if you have a higher frequency dome. I mean, Epcot Center, that huge dome is a really high frequency dome. I don't even know what frequency it is, but it looks, I mean, from far off, it looks like a perfect sphere. So the higher frequency gives you larger domes and more spherical shape. All right, well, I don't have any use for this right now. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration a second ago. I'm going to go ahead now and take it apart. Luckily, it goes down a lot easier than it goes up. I hope this helps and inspires you to go create your own. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.